Are you looking at adding a small canine into your household, but you're not sure which small breed to pick from? Well, in today's video, we're gonna take a more in-depth look at two of the most popular small breeds, the Pug and the Boston Terrier. Welcome back to the Fenrir Pug Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload of the Fenrir Pug Show. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. Let's begin by taking a brief look at the history of the lovable little pug. They're believed to be a relation of the Tibetan Mastiff that dates back over 2,000 years ago in China. They were closely guarded treasures, favoured by Chinese emperors and only lived in the most luxurious accommodations. In fact, the only way to get one of these adorable little dogs was to be gifted one. Although the breed is over 2,000 years old, they made it out of China and the Far East around 300 years ago. Thanks to Dutch traders, they started to appear in Europe at some point between the end of the 16th century and the beginning of the 17th. Once in Europe, they became a firm favourite of European royalty. A pug reportedly saved the life of William, Prince of Orange, and so they became the official dog of the House of Orange in Holland. In France, both Marie Antoinette and Josephine Bonaparte owned pugs. They were no stranger to royalty in the United Kingdom either. Queen Victoria had many pugs and even bred them. They made their way to the United States after the Civil War and were first recognised by the American Kennel Club in 1885. The Boston Terrier has long been thought of as the national dog of the United States, which is where they originated from. They were first recognised by the American Kennel Club as a non-sporting breed in 1893. The first Boston Terrier was created in 1875 from Robert Cooper from Boston who bought a dog called Judge. Judge was a cross between an English Bulldog and a white English Terrier. He was mated with a small, short-tailed, stocky white female named Burnett's Jip and with that the Boston Terrier was born. Boston Terriers have been known as many different names over the years, including Boston Bulls. They were also known as American Bull Terriers, but Bull Terriers and Bulldog owners objected to using this name. They got their official name in 1891. The pug is a small breed standing to a height of 14 inches or 35 centimetres. They weigh up to 18 pounds or 8 kilograms. Although they are small, they are sturdy and are described as having a barrel-like appearance. They have short legs, a wide chest, a flattened face and a tail that has a natural curl with one loop or two. They're recognised for the distinct facial features which include deep wrinkles on their face and forehead which is often accompanied by a thumbprint. Whilst not seen on every pug, this common feature is a smudge of black across their forehead. Pugs have four basic colours of coat, fawn, silver, apricot and black. However, all four colours are not recognised by every kennel club. While they are all recognised by the UK Kennel Club, the American Kennel Club only acknowledges fawn and black. The pug should have a small grooming session daily. This daily session should include their wrinkles being wiped over, brushing their coats with a bristle brush and checking and cleaning their ears. They should also be bathed every three weeks or if they get particularly muddy, especially in winter. Known as the American Gentleman, the Boston Terrier is extremely recognisable thanks to its tuxedo styled coat, compact body and short tail. They're a sturdy and muscular dog with a smooth straight coat, distinct large ears which sit erect on their heads and they also have a flat nose face with no wrinkles. The American Kennel Club recognised three colours, seal, a black colour with a red tinge to it, black and brindle with equal marks of white. The newly revised colours which are not regarded as true Boston Terrier colours also include solid black, tan and black, mouse which is blue and liver which is red. A Boston Terrier usually has white markings across its chest, between its eyes and on the muzzle. They don't require much grooming, in fact a weekly brush with a grooming mitt or bristle brush will keep their clothes looking sleek and clean and they will need the occasional bath to stay mud free. Male Bostons usually weigh up to 25 pounds or 11 kilograms and females up to 20 pounds or 9 kilograms. They usually stand up to 17 inches or 42 centimeters tall at the shoulder. No matter how much a Boston weighs, they should never look skinny. They should always look sturdy and muscular. Pugs are excellent companion dogs, but if you're looking for a guard dog or a dog to hunt and retrieve, then this isn't the breed for you. They're not just a lap dog, but they do crave affection and are mostly happy when curled upon your lap. 
Training and socialisation is important with this breed, as it can directly impact their temperament. Pugs with nice temperaments are curious and playful, and will happily approach people and be held by them. They're loyal and charming, as well as being a little mischievous. Training can be difficult, as they can be a stubborn breed, but it's not impossible, as they are very intelligent. It's essential that manners and obedience training starts as soon as you bring your new pug puppy home. Despite their small size, they can make good watchdogs, but they're not known to excessively bark or be yappy. The Boston Terrier is an intelligent, affectionate and lively breed. They were once bred to be savage pit fighting dogs, but that can't be any further from the truth now. They're affectionate and loyal, but can be a little bit stubborn. This means that manners and obedience training is essential with this breed and consistency and persistence are a must when training them. The best way to train a Boston Terrier is with motivational training as they're sensitive to your tone of voice. Punishing them too harshly may cause them to quickly lose interest in you and training. It can be a good idea to consider crate training with a Boston Terrier whilst house training as it may take them a while to grasp if not done properly. I would advise to ensure toilet training goes smoothly, your pup should be taken outside to the toilet every half an hour. Also, after every time your puppy eats, drinks, has a sleep or has had any type of play session. Boston Terriers need around 30 minutes of exercise a day. They also need plenty of play sessions and they love nothing more than a long game of fetch. Although not a clingy breed, pugs are most happy around the people they love. They come to you when they want attention and affection and then happily go off and do their own thing. They're particularly friendly even around people they don't know. Pugs are known for their love of children. Their sturdy stature means they can handle playtime even when it gets a little rough, despite being so small. As with any interaction between small children and dogs, this playtime should always be supervised, as accidents can and do happen. They're not known to show aggression towards other pets or small animals. These are just some of the reasons why a well-socialised pug is a popular choice for a family companion. Boston Terriers are a balanced breed, however they can become a little territorial if other dogs invade their territory. It's usually seen more commonly in males than females and can be avoided by plenty of socialising and training in manners and obedience from puppyhood. Boston Terriers have a very friendly and outgoing temperament, which, when properly raised, will make them an excellent playmate for children. They are also good with other pets like dogs, cats and other animals when they're socialised from a young age, especially if they've grown up alongside other animals. Both the Pug and the Boston Terrier are active, friendly and loving dogs when they have been properly socialised and trained. They're both compact dogs that will typically get along with any children or pets in the family. Both breeds are known to have a stubborn streak about them, which can make training difficult at times. With these two breeds, it really is down to personal preference. Either would make an excellent canine companion for your family. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated pug videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Pug Show.